Welcome to another Godot recipe. In this video, we're going to look at the basics of kinematic body movement in 3D. For this demo, we're going to use this mini tank model, which I found on itch.io, and you can get the link for that below. Just download this and unzip it in your project folder. And when you do, you're going to see it contains some materials and an OBJ file. Now I'm going to click import. I'm going to change it to import it as a scene and make the root type kinematic body. So this is kinematic body and then click re-import. And that way when you click on the OBJ, it'll say, do you want to make an inherited scene? Yes, we do. All right, now we have our tank. Now the only problem we have currently is that the tank model was saved with all of the meshes pointing in the positive Z direction but forward in Godot is the negative z direction. So, so forward for our kinematic body is this way. And I don't want everything to be backwards, so I'm just gonna take each of these meshes. There's three meshes that make up the tank. There's the head or the turret, there's the cannon, and then there's the body. There's also this extra mesh instance. I'm not sure why that's there. Something from the OBJ. Uh, so that one doesn't matter. But these three all need to be transformed to rotate 180 degrees around Y. So you do that to all three, we will be pointing in the right direction relative to our kinematic body's orientation. Okay, and you can go ahead and save this. And we're almost ready to go. We're going to need a couple other nodes. We're going to need a collision shape. And for this, I'm just going to use a box shape. And we're just going to size it to go on the, let me turn off snapping here. We're going to size this for the, for the part of the treads that touch the ground. Don't really care about the rest of it right now matching the body we could add another collision shape for you know collisions with walls and things like that but we're mainly worried about movement so i just want to worry about the part that's on the ground we can actually make this we can make this thinner and drop it down but we want this to cover the ground part of the treads okay and then the other thing we're going to add is we're going to add a position 3d and this position 3D, we're going to call this cam pause. This is going to be a marker for where we want our camera to be. And the easiest way to set this up is going to be to temporarily, let's add a camera to, a camera to, this, um, to this node. And we will switch to two viewports, set the camera to preview, and then in this scene or in this view we can raise the camera up and put it behind see I'm moving the camera position not the camera because we're going to delete that camera but I just want to put this somewhere up here where it's looking down and behind the tank this is the spot that we're going to have our chase camera follow the tank and now we can go back to one viewport and delete this camera all right, so that's our tank ready to go. Now we're ready to start working on the code. All right, so I've attached a script to the tank and I've started by defining some properties. We've got gravity, so that's how much it's gonna be pulled downwards, right? So we want that pointing downwards and I gave it a scale of 10. We have speed, this is how quickly the tank will move forward and back and rotation speed is how fast it's gonna rotate when we press left and right. The tank is going to rotate around its center by the treads moving in opposite directions. And then we have a velocity, which is our is going to be our movement vector. And I've declared these with export because that makes them easy to edit in the inspector if you ever want to change these things. Export makes that convenient. All right, our movement code is very simple. And if you've used 2D kinematic bodies, it's going to look pretty much identical. We're going to add gravity to our down to our velocity. Gravity points downwards, so that's going to pull us downwards. 
And then we're going to call the kinematic bodies move and slide with an up vector defined. And again, we're using, just like we did with down, we're using the predefined constant for 0, 1, 0. Now the only thing we need after this is we need to check which keys the player is pressing. So we're going to add a get input method, which we're going to need to define. And what this method does is it's going to check what keys you're pressing. Now we want the tank to stop moving when we are not pressing any keys. But that doesn't apply to gravity, right? Gravity should always be accelerating us downwards. If we go off a, a ledge, we'll fall downwards, that kind of thing. So we don't want to reset our velocity every frame, right? We're continuing it and maintaining it from frame to frame so that it can increase if it needs to. But we do want to zero out the x and the z directions because those are going to be what come from input. So if we take the velocity.y and we store it in a variable, at the end we can set it back unchanged. And then we can just zero out our velocity to vector 3.0 and worry about changing the x and z directions based on input. So we're going to have four possible inputs. And here those are, I've defined those in the input map, forward, back, right, and left, which are going to be w and s, a and d. Now what do we want to do when we press each of them? When we press forward, we want to move forward, which doesn't mean we want to move in the negative z global axis, we want to move in the kinematic body's negative z axis. So we want to take our velocity and we want to add the negative transform.basis.z, which is the local forward vector, times speed. And we do the same thing with back, except it's not the negative direction. And just in case that's not clear to you, let's jump over to the 3D view again for a second. Now, put us in global space mode. Now, when the tank is pointing along the z-axis, then the tank moving forward is the same as moving along the z-axis. But if the tank were to rotate and point this way, we don't want to press forward and move this way, right? We want to move straight ahead. And so you can visualize this if you turn on this button, which is local space. Local space shows you the tank's basis, which is its y, x, and z axes. And now you can see, even though we've turned 45 degrees to the right, forward for the tank is still its negative z axis. And it doesn't matter what direction I turn the tank in, its local z axis is going to be pointing the way we want it. To point. Okay, so that's what we're doing in the code by using transform.basis.z. And then right and left are going to be about rotating. So we want to rotate around the y axis by our rotation speed. Now, our rotation speed just positive or negative depending on which direction. But just like with any other kind of movement, it's always a good idea to use delta here so that you will rotate at a consistent speed in frames, depending on the frame rate. But the problem is that delta is not going to be defined in the input. So when we call it, we need to pass it. Right, then we can do this for both left and right, which will be the opposite. Okay, So now we have all four directions, and that's all we need for our kinematic movement. All right, here's our test scene to try it out. So I've made a mesh instance with a plane mesh, and then used the create static body to give it a static body so it'll be solid. Then I've added a directional light just to give us a little bit of lighting in the scene. 
so that's not so bland looking because without the light it looks pretty dull and then I've added an interpolated camera and the way the interpolated camera works is if we set its target I click here and choose the cam pause and enable it then as this cam pause moves around right it's attached to the tank so the cam pause is going to move it's going to move with it and always be above and behind it the interpolated camera will move, smoothly move to match that point if you move fast it'll slowly catch up if you move slowly it'll stay with it and that'll make it easy for us to see where we're going so let's give it a shot if we run this scene there's our tank press forward the tank goes forward right and left tank rotates and you can see forward does what we want so that's all there is to it to making a simple basic starter kinematic controller in 3d and like I said before if you've done this in 2d you can see it's very very similar feel free to take a look there's some other recipes on the way of doing more with this tank like turning it into an actual tank that can rotate its turret and shoot being able to climb up and down uh, terrain not just flat surfaces and things like that but those will be for other videos in the meantime thanks for watching i hope this was helpful and i'll see you in a future video this tutorial is part of my new godot recipes website the goal is to collect all the best tips and lessons to help make you a better Godot developer. If you like this video, I hope you'll go and check out the site. And make sure to hit subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks for watching.